I spent some time with my Prusa Mini clone and now I'm ready to share my thoughts with you, so check it out! So I'm going to share with you my experience with uh, the Prusa Mini clone and I'm starting with the assembly sequence and the first thing I have to say is I have a couple of supply problems which I managed to figure out and to solve but uh, that was a bit uh, annoying to begin with. So the first one was about the support for the bed. Uh, it's, it's supposed to have two tapped holes to hold the um, carrier for the belts but those two holes weren't tapped so I have to tap them myself it's a bit painful to tap aluminium, but I have the equipment and, uh, you know, some patience, so uh, that's what I have managed to do. In case you don't have tapping equipment and the same thing happens to you, I think uh, you have to make the holes a bit larger and then uh, put some uh, through screws and then you're done. So not a big nuisance, but still something you would not expect from uh, something which is overall quite well built. And the second one was about the extruder gear. That was a bit more serious. So the extruder gear looks like it's not hardened steel as the original Prusa Mini one, but it's instead some uh, coated, I guess it's a mild steel with the treatment of uh, either nickel plating or chrome plating. I would go for nickel. Um, and the problem there is that I think they have uh, machined it to measure before the coating, which is, uh, let's say, a rookie mistake when you're into engineering. So it turned out that the shaft was actually a few uh, hundreds, or I will say a tenth of a millimeter larger than it was than it, than it should have been. So that means that I had to, um, you know, polish it a bit and remove the coating to make sure that it would fit into the bearings. You don't want to press it too hard on the bearings. I actually made a mistake to press fit on one of them by hammering it, and I think it was a mistake because then if I have to take it out, it's going to be a bit painful. With the second one, I have to grind it off and making sure that this was uh, uh, coming and going, sliding, uh, sliding, because if you get your filament stuck in the extruder, you want to tear it apart, and to take it apart, you have to take the bearing off the, uh, of the gear. So I would say that's a bit more serious of an issue, and that required me some time and uh, you know also some patience and uh, some uh, repairing skills, which otherwise... Uh, you know, you have to have some access to tools and you have to have a bit of an understanding on how to deal with mechanical parts. And that was it for the supply um, and then a bit the assembly. The assembly process, it's pretty smooth, I would say. You have to set, uh, set aside a day-ish. So it took me something between six and eight hours, including the two, uh, you know, the two uh, uh, problems I had uh, mentioned before. Overall, I enjoy the process, so I think, you know, uh, I am, I, I like tinkering and I like this kind of things. so for me it was uh, quite a pleasure, and I would say it's a bit of a pity that Prusa didn't supply the machine in a kit as well, so um, I would urge and encourage uh, the Prusa people to think about uh, sending the machine uh, down to pieces and uh, having people assemble it themselves. I would say, overall, uh, smooth process, the instructions are decently good and uh, I would say the biggest uh, problem for me but uh, I might think it was due to my printing because it's the printed parts it's putting the belts inside the tooth of the parts both in the X carriage and on the Y carriage uh, that's been a painful process for me I have had to um, knife a bit down and you know push them quite hard to get into place and you cannot leave them out you have to push them all the way down otherwise uh, you will you will hit the support when that goes into the home position so apart from that i would say the assembly process is funny Now I would say the most important part is how the machine actually prints and I think that's what uh, you know the question that you have had since the beginning of the video and you can see a few of the samples here so this is mostly PLA so this silver one you see here that pool and uh, the, the ship from Mandalorian and this part of the uh, marble tower is uh, Sunlu silk PLA silver I like it a lot but overall I think it prints pretty pretty well and the machine performed very very well this is the longest print I have done. It's 26 hours of print, and actually I ran out of filament in, in between, so I had to, to swap it. But I would say, you know, quite remarkably and impressive. The quality of the print is uh, very good, and uh, I like this a lot. 
Finally, these orange parts here, uh, they are from a, for a friend. Uh, he has one of these kick scooters, and this is a handle from the kick scooter. Uh, it's something I found on Thingiverse. In general, I would say the build surface is quite sticky, so even with PLA, it is quite an effort to take it away. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied also with the bad performance and the fact that it is uh, quite well done with the PE sheet. Apart from, the, from this, the only, I would say, downside is probably the bearings. They are not super high quality. You can maybe hear the noise here. There is some grinding noise if I move the plate, especially in the Y bearings. Uh, kind of the same here. You can maybe hear it. Yeah, so you might need to replace those uh, in the end. Uh, but uh, yeah, so far it didn't impact so much the print quality, so I'm pretty satisfied with the print quality of the machine. So the next question is actually, is it worth it? And uh, so I have made this cost comparison, you can see it on the screen right now. So if you break it down, I would say that you're getting roughly offset by half of the price if you take this machine instead of the original Prusa Mini. The original Prusa Mini retails for 380 euros, while this kit comes at around 200. I would I keep out the um, uh, shipping costs because that depends a lot where you're sitting in the world. So I, th I think that is a bit, uh, and you have to deal with that anyway. So in general, you know, if I have to um, talk about the cost, uh, I cannot avoid talking about the time it takes to put this thing together. So you need, first of all, you need almost, you know, 700 grams of uh, plastic to print all the parts. I've actually been quite generous. I printed most of it with four perimeters and 20-25% uh, infill. So I think it might, you know, you might have saved some on that, but I think it doesn't really, it's not really worth risking to have to reprint something because it breaks, uh, because you've been too scarce with that. So that adds up to like 700 grams of uh, filament, which goes price around yeah, 17 euros-ish. And then it depends, of course, whether you buy your filament and uh, how cheap you can get it. I used the um, SPLA from uh, Sunlu, which I really recommend. The, the look and feel is pretty much like PTG, uh, even if it's much easier to print, in my opinion. I am not really a fan of PTG, but in general, I like this one. and. Uh, up to now, I didn't have any issues uh, with uh, the plastic parts, except one that I printed with PLA, which actually failed. I have to reprint the ax, uh, axis here because it, it split in one of the cracks while I was tensioning the, the, um, the belt. So, as I said, you cannot disregard time. It is three days of printing to get all this stuff done. Plus, of course, you have to have yourself a printer. Otherwise, you will have to buy PLA parts. Uh, Fisech also supplies PLA printed parts. You can buy them and they come from pretty much the same cost of the material, which I really don't understand how. Uh, but anyway, you might end up in a situation where you have assembled your printer and then you have to reprint some parts with PETG and then replace them. It's a bit of a mess, I would say. So to me, this is a big uh, downside for, for this being the first printer that you get uh, and you don't have access to any other printer. Anyway, it's a bit more than three days of printing plus one day of uh, installing. So that's quite some time that you have to invest on this. So this is, I'm not going to judge because uh, time and money, you know, the, the equation between time and money depends really on the conditions of different people. So to me, it was a funny process but I'm not sure if I would have to do it again. So uh, that's, of course, personal preference, but I would say you get some less money spending on this one. Uh, then you might end up with hidden costs, like, for example, if you want to replace the extruder with, um, with a Bontech extruder. As I said, the extruder wheel is not super, uh, I would say, super robust, so I'm, I'm expecting it to have some problems in the future, so that might require like a 70 euro upgrade for the extruder. And you might also want to uh, replace your bearings. Actually, Prusa is supplying spare parts for the machines. So you can buy the Prusa original, uh, I'm sure they're not manufacturing them, but the Prusa uh, ones they use on their original machines. And they come pretty cheap, so in the end you can kind of, that. That's that's a bit of a very simple upgrade you can make. 
Uh, the other upgrade that somebody recommended is the, again, the Bontech, uh, heat break. I'm not sure I'm going down that road because, uh, yeah, the Bontech heat break is pretty cheap. It's like 17 euros retail. Still, I don't see a strong need of that. Yeah, of course, this, you have the Bowden tube going all the way down into the heat break, but that's the same with the Bontech one. If you look at the Bontech website, you will see that actually it's not a full metal hot end. Uh, and it's not a full metal heat break, so you have a PTFE, PTFE uh, liner inside, which in the end to me doesn't really make a big difference compared to this one. So overall, I'm not sure I'm going to do any upgrades until something fails, but then, you know, if you factor that in as well, you might doing your evaluation, and you might come up in the end that uh, that's not so valuable for you. So that's very personal. I want to lay down the facts. These are the facts. This is the time it takes to print the parts. These are the costs that you're going to face for the hidden ones and the open ones. And so then you will have to take judgment yourself. So we have come to my personal conclusion on this experience with the machine. So I would have to say I'm pretty satisfied with the end result. I think it's quite okay. I mean, the, the printing, the printing quality is good and the way it handles different kind of filaments, I think that's also as good as the original Prusa Mini. Then, you know, if you ask me, do you recommend that? Then I would say it depends. And what it depends on is if you can get your hands on a Prusa original machine. I know there's, you know, there's a queue and there is uh, also in some places over the world, it might be very expensive or very, very time consuming to get that and it might be easier to get the kit from China. I definitely do not recommend this as a first printer because you will have to go all the way to print your own parts. You know, I think it's going to be a very long process because you will get the PLA parts. You can buy the PLA parts. So unless you can get some fab lab or some place where you can print those parts, then it, you have to buy the PLA parts and then you have to upgrade them to PETG at a certain point in time. And, you know, I think that's really going to be very painful. I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I, I will like to go into the process of building another one or rebuilding this one. Uh, you also have to take into account that you might fail with some of the prints. So they might break while you assemble them. It actually happened to me twice with the X uh, and the uh, bit here. Uh, it broke the first time because it split on the, on the print. The print quality was not very good. And the second time, one of these square nuts just came in, you know, a bit tilted and it cracked it open. So you have to consider also that you might end up in a situation where you have to reprint some of the parts or you will have to have some, some issues. And if you don't own another printer, then you're screwed, basically. So, yeah, bottom line, I would not recommend it if you are, uh, you know, if, if it's your first printer. And the second thing, you know, that you need to be careful about is you need some mechanical skills. You need to make sure you will be able to repair some of the parts in case they come with, an, with a defect or a problem. In my case, you know, I could have uh, gone back to Fire Sect, whatever, <laughs> complaining to them about the quality of the parts or, or you know, but, but yeah, I, I have this ability, I have these skills, I have a workshop, so I can do it myself. So in general, I think you have to be ready to do some repair on the original parts to make sure that you have uh, you know, functioning machine. That's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you stay with me and you might uh, consider subscribing if you like what you see. And that's it for today. And until next time.